Hello dear visitor and welcome to Buddha's workshop. My very first project on tape is going to be a completely 3D printed CNC. And if you would like to know more what this channel is about and what other projects I've realized so far, please watch the intro video on my welcome page. Oh, and please don't take that inner voice of mine too seriously. It will pop up from time to time, but I'm working on it with my psychiatrist and my wife and kids, and neighbor, and lawyer, and dog. But it's getting better. Stopping the comedy, you came here for something else. Let's dive right into it. Anyway. So how did I come up with the idea for a completely printed CNC anyway? Well, my first CNC build was supposed to be a mostly printed CNC, which means you still have some metal parts, you connect them with 3D printed parts, you put some electronics in it, a few stabber motors, a spindle, and you basically have your CNC. I even made over Christmas the following design. But then I came up with the glorious idea to design, print, and build my own completely 3D printed CNC. I said to myself, who needs metal? Especially heavy metal. No worries, just kidding. I actually love heavy metal. Oh, and by the way, this video is not going to be about how to set up the electronics, how to use Gerbil, or how to use CAM software. Why? Because I haven't used it in my life myself. So let's see what will happen. And what are the challenges I impose on myself in this project? Well, I would like to have a build volume of around an A4 page, which is roughly 20 by 30 centimeters, and 3 centimeters in height on the Z axis. I want to use only 3D printed parts, which means no glue and no metal apart from the stepper motors, spindle motor and chuck, homing switches, and electronics. At the end, I would like to have a precision of 1 mm per axis if possible. And I would like to carve my logo into wood. And honestly, it also would be nice if I didn't burn down my workshop. By the way, the challenge here is not to build a CNC that runs permanently, at least not the first version. I will put all the files under a common creative license, which allows everybody to freely use and or adapt my design. Now let's talk a moment about the difficulties that may arise when printing everything in plastic and how to address those difficulties. Since motors, especially stepper motors, can get quite hot, I already want to prepare for a possible need of ventilators. I should keep the runtime short, and I have to foresee the smallest connection possible between motor and plastic. If the proof of concept works, one can mount the motors with normal screws and a couple of washers to reduce heat transfer, but that's not the deal here for now. By the way, washers are on some other channels called SPACERS! Right, Ivan? Go and check out Ivan Miranda's channel. I mean, that guy is crazy. He's printed a whole tank. You may say, I also printed the tank. But can you sit in it and drive around? I have to design the least parts possible. The more parts you have, the more complicated, the more room for error, figuratively and literally speaking. I need a tight fit between the pieces without putting stress on them, but here I have a huge advantage with the Ultimaker, which has out of the box very small tolerances, so designs don't have to be much modified. What you design is what you get here. I can avoid warping by printing several walls and a larger infill than in average prints, and a large surface area between the pieces that connect should help as well. There was also the question that popped in my mind if I should print some parts in ABS and some parts in PLA. But all in all, and based on many prints in the past, I think printing purely in PLA might be sufficient, and it prints better anyway. Now, what to do if the challenge is not to use any metal ball bearings? Well, I went on Thingiverse and found quite some designs that I printed and tested. And they do what they're supposed to do mostly. But the problem is they're not stable and they're wobbly. 
So I don't think they would be up for the challenge in my uh, application. So what I did is simply print an axis, a wheel, turn back time 40 years, and played like a little child. And what I found, hey, it works. There is little friction and the little friction I can even get away because I can lubricate them. It doesn't alter the plastic in any way. So that's the design I'm going with. Somehow I also have to transfer the power from the stepper motor to the machine. I came up with two solutions. Either I print a timing belt in flexible filament, but then I have to solve the following problem. Or I print a spur and a pulley, but here I have the problem that since I couldn't remove the original pulley from the motor, the, this pulley became quite large, which may be a problem in terms of stepping resolution. I think I'm still in the tolerances, but we'll see. And uh, actually there is a third option in printing a lead screw vertically on my 3D printer, but I don't think this would be technically feasible and uh, I don't think there would be an advantage over the, the solution I chose in the end. Let's quickly talk about electronics and motors. Since I will be using these Mitsumis, which are recovered from old laser printers, I know that their stepping angle of 7.5 degrees per step are much bigger than the 1.8 degrees per step of an EMA. This may be an issue for the precision of my machine, but I hope that microstepping will jump in and cover the gap to keep me within the tolerances I would like to have. In terms of electronics, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the Arduino Uno, the CNC shield and the stepper motor controller. My spindle will be a DC motor also from an old printer a small chuck, a speed controller, a very simple one, but it should, should do the trick. And uh, for the homing switches, I will use micro switches, but I'm not sure if I will install them right away, since I have read that uh, they may cause false alarms. And since they're not necessary from the beginning, I might wait a little moment. Now some time lapses of me designing the most important parts, including some of my comments. As mentioned earlier, I knew I had to limit the touching surface between the stepper and the side panel as much as possible. I also knew that the forces on the motor when in motion will be radial to its axis, which actually works in my favor. So I needed a design to take this into account. And this is the result. Ladies and gentlemen, it fits. No movement whatsoever. You see? Martin is happy. Ha! 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 It might even work, my idea, with a completely printed CNC. Good! Next! What's next? This was pretty much straightforward given that the basic design came out of the tool Gear Generator. This is, by the way, an excellent tool with many settings and export options. I will put a link in the description. You can buy a license for very little money, which is definitely worth it. I designed quite large wheels. A. To keep the friction per rotation with the axis to a minimum and B. To be less vulnerable to impurities when rolling on the y-axis. I hope that guide notch that you will see at the end will be enough to stay aligned on the y-axis. And in the worst case I will add some side wheels to the side plates. 
The final design for mounting the axis from both sides is not on tape, but the main purpose was stability. First, I wanted to design the Z-axis also including wheels. But since there should be very little up and down movement, and since PLA glides very well on itself, I decided to use the KISS principle. Keep it stupid simple. Designing the base plate was again defined by the printing surface of my Ultimaker. But I used the available space efficiently and that's the result with which I'm very happy. The puzzle design for connecting the pieces securely is not really worth mentioning, that's proven to work. What is worth mentioning though is despite or because of the precision the Ultimaker comes with, the only issue was coming from the corners. Because when the 3D printer slows down and ultimately stops to change direction by more than a few degrees, there is still a little afterflow of material that settles in that corner and later creates a tension with the counter corner. I solved this by making those corners round to create space for any additional plastic and it worked in a test print like a charm, at least for now anyway. And since I'm not allowed to use any screws, I had to figure out a way to hold the workpiece in place. The L-shaped blocker is self-explaining and shouldn't pose any problems. I just hope that the springy wheelie design will make its job. In any case, the many cross holes in the base plate are designed so that in the future one can just push an M5 screw through, lock it in one of the cross sections and tighten the workpiece the classic way. The X-axis gliding rails have two purposes. They need to carry the whole carriage and prevent the two side plates from wobbling. I'm pretty sure that using the puzzle design again will work and create one stiff rail for a more or less smooth movement on the X-axis. The use of two rails and the fact that they interlock securely with the side plates on large surfaces should be sufficient. The holders for the Arduino in the back, the three ventilator frames on the top and on the sides and the speed controller in the front just complete the design. What might be pointed out is how I intend to manage the cables. I want to bundle all the cables from the X, Y and Z axis and the spindle above the carriage. A 3D printed spring about the length of the Y axis will go up from the Arduino holder. The cables will be zip tied to its end and when the whole thing advances away from the Arduino, the spring will just bend and keep the cables under tension, away from the moving parts. That's the theory anyway. Please let me draw some final conclusions after having designed the whole thing. I had to reduce the build volume on the x-axis because the print area of the Ultimaker is quite large but not indefinite. And besides, I wanted to print the gliding rails of the x-axis of the machine so that the print head moves completely either on the x or on the y-axis. I wanted to avoid the print diagonally because I hope that this will provide a smoother track for the wheels to run on. Regarding the y-axis, I figured out that by adding some ba base plates and a spur, I could prolong it indefinitely, which is not a bad thing. And regarding the y-axis, well, I had some space left, so now it's a little bit more than the 3 cm that I anticipated. So far I could easily comply with the no metal policy, but I might have to add some glue or epoxy between the pulleys, because the original pulley is twisted and doesn't get enough grip. I don't want to lean too much out of the window, but regarding heat, stability, precision and power transmission I remain confident. But let's see once the machine is running. There is one more thing I'm pretty happy about. I didn't burn down the workshop! Now let me thank you for watching the video. See you in part 2 after probably 150 hours of printing and assembly. The video will come out in March of the year 2037. Cheers. Oh and by the way, please consider a small donation to Solacia. She's the patron of all YouTubers. Solisha who? Subscribe, like, share. Solisha.